What is up guys? It is the Turtle Girl. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. 40 gallon tank today. We're doing some routine maintenance, AKA water changes. So I actually haven't done a video like this in a while. And from this distance, you might not be able to tell, but this tank needs cleaning. There is algae on the front. In fact, let me get you a closer look. You can see that like there's some algae on the glass here and it's just, it's due for a water change. I usually do water changes bi-weekly on this tank. So routine maintenance is really important and I'm gonna be showing you how I do it for Hoku's tank over here. Quick specs since people always ask. 40 gallon breeder. This is the basking area with heat and UVB. We've got a power filter on it, some lights. First things first is scraping the algae off the front here. I feel like Vanna White when I present my algae. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this all up, starting with the algae. Also, I'd just like to say, since people are always wondering, this metal structure above me, this would be my loft bed, so I kind of have to like squat in order to get in the camera frame. So if I look weird, that would be why. But for the algae, the first thing we have is this mag float. So this actually sticks on the inside of the tank and it's gonna be able to scrape the inside. Just so you guys know, there are affiliate links in the description for all of the stuff and products that I'm talking about today. In case you need them, help support the channel, but cleaning off algae, let's go. If this would actually work. Oh, you're gonna get squished, dude. Move your, move your face. Now I don't particularly have any method to this. I mostly just go over the spots that have algae. Algae is mostly just an aesthetic thing, not something to really stress about. If you have it in your tank, it's kind of just a part of the natural environment. It just can be kind of ugly to look at. So I usually just do the front glass. And I just remembered that I also usually at this point unplug the filter and the wave maker so that the debris can kind of settle and I can get ready to use the water changing siphon. So behind Groot here are all of the plugs. So I'm gonna reach back here. You can see maybe. That is all of my outlet plugs back there, which I have to unplug. I also unplug the heaters because you don't want to be removing water with the heater still plugged in because that element will still heat up and then it could potentially just mess with the thermostat. Your heater could explode. Just unplug pretty much everything when you're doing a water change as a rule of thumb. Okay, so now with all the algae scraped off, pretty simple. We move on to a water change. Now, I will say this video at this point is kind of not meant to be a, oh no, it's floating away. That's why we have magnetism so I can get this back to where it needs to be. These can also erase memory cards, so just, you know, don't put these really powerful magnets by your computer or anything. It's a bad idea, trust me. <laughs> magnets and memory do not mix, so keep these magnets far away from anything that stores information, except for your brain. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just not even gonna talk about that. that. That did not happen. But as I was trying to say before I got distracted by the magnets, this is not really a how-to video. It's more of a, this is my maintenance routine, kind of just showing you guys. So this isn't a how-to. It's not gonna have everything you need to know. I've done other videos on this. You can check out the playlist up here, but we gotta get started with this water change. What we've got here is some supplies. We've got my trusty five gallon soy sauce bucket, been using this for years, and then also my aquarium siphon. Now, if I'm looking to actually gravel vac, I'll use a smaller one because this one is relatively large and moves water pretty fast, but because I'm just trying to change some water, this is what I'll use. Now, okay, people tell me things about how I start my siphon. How most normal people would do it is they would like put this tube in and then invert it so that water fills the tube, lift the tube out of the water and then kind of like let the water travel down the tube this way and then you keep doing that until the water starts. However, for one, this is not very long 
This is like six feet of tubing and it's not very flexible and I don't really have space because of the basking area blocking this tube from being inverted. So how I do it is I'm just gonna stick this into the water. What I'm gonna do is suck the air out of the tube with my mouth. Now, my mouth is not actually going on the end of this tube, okay? I'm not a psychopath, I'm not disgusting, but I actually kind of make, I wrap my fist around the end so that my mouth is only touching my fist rather than the tubing because the tubing can be gross. But if you do this correctly, you should not get any water in your mouth. I lean over my, you can't see my bucket, but I'm gonna come down here because you wanna make yourself as close to the bucket as possible. So making a little ring around the end, watching the water come up through the tube because that's how you get water in your mouth is if you're not paying attention, you just suck. You have to pay attention to where the water's at coming down the tube. Most of the time, this is not messy. Also, I would like to say that this tank does not have anything in it. I don't think it will have anything in it for a long time. I'm honestly just keeping it as a grow out for if Sienna needs a bigger tank or if the Axolotl needs a bigger tank, anything like that. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get this siphon started. Voila, easy. Now if I'm just changing water, I'll just hold the siphon here. If I'm trying to do some spot cleaning on the bottom, I'll move this around. But the bucket below here fills pretty quickly. So as you can see, the water level going down Poku is trying to bite my fingers as per usual. And I have to pay attention to this bucket because I don't want it to overflow. So once I see that this level has gone down a bit and my five gallon bucket is about, you know, four fifths of the way full, I will take out my siphon and you can see all the water down here. But you might notice that it looks a little yellow. That is because there's quite a bit of driftwood in this tank, so it creates tannins and when it releases those into the water, it makes it kind of this tea color. It doesn't necessarily mean that your tank is dirty. Rather, it's more just that the wood is naturally releasing those tannins. Doing water changes can help with that. You can see that there is also a little bit of debris in the bottom. If I were doing a gravel vac, then there would probably be more. And just for your reference, when I'm doing water changes, I try to do 20 to 30%. So if this is a 40 gallon tank, and in taking approximately, you know, like four, maybe four and a half gallons out every single time. If I just do two buckets, that'll be a 20% water change. If I do three buckets, that'll be a 30% water change. Makes it super easy. So we'll go ahead and take this to the bathroom and then we will do the second bucket. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed some water. Hoku is climbing around. Um, but now at this point, before I fill it up with clean water, I actually like to rearrange some of the decor a little bit, or not really rearrange it, but just like straighten it out and fix it because over time Hoku will just, you know, knock it over or I might knock it over while doing a water change. So I just like to straighten them out while there's less water in the tank so that it's easier for me and I don't have to like reach my arm super deep into the water because this tank is like, you know, 18 inches deep. I don't have very long arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Will you stop trying to eat me, please? I would appreciate it. There's the turtle. Hello, turtle. Would you like to be in a thumbnail like this? So at this point, some of you might be wondering, what the heck is that little thing that's suction cupped onto the wall? This is one of my favorite things that I have in my turtle tank. This is called a wave maker, and this actually helps circulate the water in the aquarium. It's like, think of it like an underwater fan. So it helps circulate the water. It, there's a little propeller in there that pushes the water around. And I have it angled so that it actually kicks up debris off of the bottom of the tank. So it helps keep the tank a lot cleaner than it would be if that stuff was just sitting there. So these are awesome, link in the description. Also something that people ask about is my intake sponge. 
So this is like a pre-filter sponge with very large pores, very large holes in it, so that it catches just the bigger debris. This I also clean out when I clean my filter. That pre-filter also helps with waste control. Hoku has not tried to eat it. I'd imagine that some turtles would, so just to keep an eye out for that, but I believe those are sold at Aquarium Co-op, so feel free to check that out as well. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I do make affiliate links from the Amazon stuff, but you know, you're helping a sister out. Alright, so now the tank is filled back up, I'm gonna go ahead and plug everything back in. Gotta get the filter started. Okay, so now the water change has been done and you guys might be like, wow, there's a lot of debris floating around in there. It almost looks worse than before it started. And let me tell you, that is totally normal. Because you did a water change, you moved some stuff around, you probably kicked up a good deal of debris and so it's gonna take a while for the filter to run through that. But remember that the reason we do water changes is to pull the nitrate and the other waste out of the tank. That's why this should be like a routine and consistent thing. Give this tank about 30 minutes to clear up and it should be way cleaner than it was before I did the water change. In fact, I don't know if you can tell, but even the watercolor is a bit more clear, a bit less tannin saturated, if that's what you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that is how I do maintenance on my turtle tank. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a thumbs up down below. Also, shout out to my good friend Bella for the shirt. By the way, you guys, so I never mentioned this in my videos, but there is a P.O. box in the description if you guys ever want to send, like, fan mail and stuff. I try to write back, I do. If I have gotten mail from you and I haven't written back, I'm sorry, life has been crazy. But, anyways, with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!